Only just around the corner after that uh, big look at the Golden Slipper is a race two, and the totes are going to come up right for us now. And Kenny, you can take us through them. Yeah, the queen of the turf stakes and build is your last year's Slipper winner is right in the market at $5.30. Stella Marie and Beat the Fader both at $12. Heather, big tip on course at $4.90. She's the favourite on the tote. On tight, be up near the lead from the Gay Waterhouse Stable, $5.60. Nova Claus from Melbourne, $14. Ferocity at $8.80. Sorrento at $16. Over the page to number nine is uh, Poppet, $21. That seems good odds. $42 for Lady Marion and Flying Spice is $22. Crestfall and $40. Bucks. And Snarty, as I explained, was a late scratching on course. Yes, well, uh, the horses are in the yard. And let's have a look at the tips. Kenny's gone with Nova Claus. Duff's gone with Heather. And Simon Marshall is also with Heather. Well, Malcolm Johnson might uh, have something to say in this race. Here he is down the mounting yard with Anthony Mitten. Well, Malcolm, you've got a lovely chance in race two. Stella Marie, do you like her chances? Yeah, I do. She's... Uh this is her fourth run back, and uh, her runs have been very, very good. She just kept improving the whole time. She can't draw an alley, unfortunately. I would have loved to have drawn an alley today, but she only got beat a length and a half in the Coolmore the other day, and she comes in this race pretty well with 55 and a half, and uh, she got better and better, and I think she's going to be very hard to beat today. Well, the bad alleys is why you put a bloke like uh, Jim Cassidy on. Yeah, exactly. Well, when the alleys came through, I, I went for dinner with Jimmy on uh, Thursday night, and he said, what would you do? And I said, you really don't want to know what I'd do. I, I would have jumped from 10 and sorted about five out in the first 50 yards and then worried about the consequences later. But uh, I don't think he'll do that. She's got brilliant speed, this filly. Fantastic gate speed. And I think she can go forward and sit outside the leader and uh, prove very hard to beat. You better not. They'll be in a mood in the stewards' room, I reckon, on a day like today. It's a fantastic day. Uh, your best result in the slipper? I run second in uh, the 92, the, uh, I retired in 93, and I run second on a very good filly uh, called With Me. I run third way back, you don't want to know how far back, on a horse called Rosie Air, but uh, they were my closest finishes. I had about 14 rides in the slipper, and I just couldn't crack it. You know, those years I was riding for Tommy, he never had really had a golden slipper horse, uh, although he won plenty of slippers, they weren't in my era. So uh, it's a great day, though. You don't get better racing than golden slipper day here at Rose Hill. It's just fantastic to be here and have two runners as a trainer on this day. I'm as proud as punch. Good luck with the both of them, Mel. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, champ. Thank you. He should be proud as punch too, uh, Malcolm Johnson. And uh, well, from a wide gate, he just come over and take five out. He said he used to do it often, and that's what he tries to do us do to us on the golf course now. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's uh, plenty of trainers who are pretty sharp on the golf course, and uh, we'll be up with a sharp race shortly. Race two, right after the break here from Rose Hill Gardens. <laughs> Plenty to come on the wide world of sport. Sport, sport and more sport. But today we're at Rose Hill Gardens for the Amy Golden Slipper. The Queen of the Turf Stakes, it's just around the corner. Over 1,500 metres at Group 2 level. $140,000 up for grabs. What are they doing out in the betting ring? Here's Andrew Voss to tell us. Well, Simon, it's been a terrific betting race, actually. For much of the betting uh, for the Queen of the Turf Stakes, it's had equal favourites. They're right at the moment for Gay Waterhouse on type is the favourite in the betting ring. Number four for the Hawk Stable, Heather, second favourite. And one of the best-backed runners, number seven, the Kiwi runner, Ferocity. There's been some very good bets for it. At one stage, it was the outright favourite. Such was the uh, support of money for it. So certainly one to watch, number seven. Belle du jour, if you're backing it on the tote, you are taking unders about last year's Golden Slipper win. And if you're already at the desperate stage, even though we're at race two, if you're looking for one of those long shot winners or perhaps something to throw into the trifectas, keep an eye out for the Melbourne filly, number 11, Flying Spice. There's been a few nibbles for it. It uh, hasn't got a bad record, number 11, Flying Spice. One to look out for in this, the second event, the Queen of the Turf Stakes. Gee, we're not at the desperate stakes, are we? <laughs> Give me not time, yet. son. Give me a bit of time. <laughs> Take us through that tapes, Kenny. Bell, is yours, $6.10. Just a little easy and uh, hasn't been a great deal of support for us. Stella Marie at $12. That's Malcolm Johnston's runner. Beat the fade at $14. Heather into $5 solid. 
580 on tight might shorten the tad nova claws at 13 dollars ferocity at seven dollars and 20 cents she's won six out of eight the kiwi she's right in it uh sorrento at 16 dollars tab number nine over the page is uh puppet at $18, she's a good roughie. Lady uh, Marion at $47, Flying Spy 16, Crestfallen 41, and Snartic is not running. Well, the Queen of the Turf stakes, it's 1,500 metres for the uh, for the horses to go around. Simon Marshall's over there behind the gate. Simon, how do they look? Thank you, Simon. Uh, Donald, pretty as a picture, uh, Belle du Jour, presented very well. I can tell you, Stella Marie spot on too. Miracle's got her absolutely looking a treat. Beat the fades, got bandages on the back legs. Obviously, Speedy cuts a little bit when she races. She looks a picture. Expect a bit of a, uh, a better run from Beat the Fade, the three. Heather could not uh, fault whatsoever, number four. It'll get the perfect run in race two, just looking at the speed on the race. Uh, I thought Ferocity, number seven, did present very well. Geez, it's a lovely striking type. Very strong and forward. We'll carry the uh, white bridle like Sunline, too. Got a set of blinkers, black blinkers on there, too, as Larry Cassidy, the jockey of number seven, just walks by. And I also thought Flying Spice, very well placed, this filly. Uh, in this race. I thought she was very well placed and she is looking a treat very much like yourself, Simon O'Donnell and Kenny Callender. Go to Kenny, he looks a treat. <laughs> oh, gee whiz. All right, well, that's on type. You can see in the uh, blue with the sort of white cross owned by John Sigalt. She's a very good filly and there's his other one, Bill Dejour. Uh, last year's Golden Slipper winner in the blue with the white braces and that was crestfallen. The other one in blue and white. They seem to be the popular colours there, Ronnie. They certainly are. And Belle Dejour, what a great to see her run in the Coolmore the other day. You know, she loves this track and it'd uh, be good to see her win on, on this day that she won last year in such a dramatic circumstance. I've got a funny feeling Lenny Bees will be hanging on for dear life as they <laughs> jump. <laughs> there is a big tip since I've been on track here for this New Zealand, a ferocity. They say she's a very good mare, so it'll be interesting. She needs luck from an awkward draw, though. Exactly right. Uh, she's by Herocity, uh, who won uh, a, a big race here. I think it may have been the Mercedes uh, about a decade ago. All right, there's Bill Dejour about to take a place for Lenny Beasley. Uh, Simon said he'll be looking at the start. Well, last year in the slipper, of course, she missed the start, but still landed the cash. OK, they're all in. Let's go to our caller, Terry Bailey. Last year's slipper winner in the thick of the action in the betting as well. Queen of the turf, group two level and they're set. A lot of movement near the inside. Ferocity stood up well with Beat the Fay. The lights are flashing. Racing, Nova Claus and Heather both very slow to get going. Poppet came out of the gate quickly, beat the fade, ridden for the front. Stella Marie going fast. On type settles on the fence, two lengths to Crestfallen, two lengths Lady Marion, Flying Spice, Belle de Jour, Sorrento, Ferocity's well back and she's wide. Overclaws on the fence and two and a half to Heather last of all. Beat the fate, found the lead, Stella Marie caught wide, rushed up to her, Girth Pop it eases to settle third. On type just got up onto her heels there and dropped the bit, going up outside of it, Crestfallen. Two lengths Lady Marion, Flying Spice, the Victorian centre field from Sorrento. They were followed by Belle de Jour being passed by Nova Claus on the fence, Ferocity the Kiwi second last and Heather whips them in 750 out in the Queen of the Turf and beat the fade made the play the breaker neck for Beeman on Jimmy Cassidy and Stella Marie two lengths pop it behind them on the fence on type they were followed by Crestfall and Sorrento wide out starting a run Lady Marion on the rail from Flying Spice Belle de Jour starts a run wide out they were followed by Nova Claus Heather starting to make ground and Ferocity last and being hard ridden around the bend beat the fade headed off by the little filly Stella Marie Stella Marie race to the front pop it the fresh horse on the scene three out Two lengths away, Sorrento, Belle de Jour to the extreme outside from Crestfall and on type. Pop at the front runner, Sorrento's a length away, Belle de Jour's out very deep and she's still coming. Pop it in front with 100 metres to run, Sorrento's gunning her down. Sorrento moved up to Pop it, Sorrento got the lead with 50 to go and she's too good. Sorrento wins from Pop it, Belle de Jour a gallon third from on type and Heather late. Then Crestfall and they were followed by Stella Marie, Ferocity, never a winning chance from Flying Spice, Lady Marion, Nova Claus and beat the fade last in. Well, a Quinella to the Randwick trainer, John Size. Poppet looked home, and then his other runner, Sorrento, come along and knocked her out. Eight, Sorrento, 18.30 and $4. Number nine, Poppet, $4.60. Close for third, but I think that ever-reliable Belle du Jour will run third and pay two twenty. But that is not official as yet. All right, as we pick up the replay, there's Sorrento for Chrissy Munts, who rides Accelerator in the big one, just going past Poppet right near the line. Corey Brown rode Poppet a treat, and she just faded in that last 100 metres. And here, as we see the wider angle, that's Poppet going past Stella Marie in the red colours. She looked home there, but now Sorrento in the uh, mauve checks comes along. And wide out, that's Belle du Jour in the blue and white. 
on type getting through the centre also in blue and white owned in similar interests and they're the two that figure in the photo for third but number one has got third the numbers are eight nine and one with Beldesure as I said paying two dollars and twenty cents here's Andrew Voss Oops, yep and we'll be with John size right at the moment very happy man John uh, going into the race did you split the two no, not at all. I mean, they've both been racing tough. Uh, they've both been out of luck. And uh, it was just a matter of things happening for them on the right day. She's far more efficient, uh, Sorrento, on a good track. We've got a fast track today, which made it even better so for her. Um, even though he was three wide with no cover, she's, he kept working into the race, working into the race. Poppet looked to have an easier run and, and looked as if to doubt Sprinter, but just the last little bit, she's um, ground down. All right, John, I know you don't have one in the slipper, but if you did, which would you like to have? Oh, look, I haven't had a close look at it, but if I'm only going to have one pick, I'll have the favourite. Thanks. <laughs> All right, John, well done then. We'll go straight over to Simon Marshall. Thanks, bossy. Chrissy Munce, big day for you, Chrissy. Sorrento, she won great today. She put in, Simon. It was good. You know, she's, um, I suppose, had a bit of a reputation of a non-winner, but she's, uh, she's got home today, mate. Yeah, time to run beautifully. Giovanna in the Mercedes-Benz race four coming up. Bit of an outsider. She's probably the only one that can genuinely beat Ty the Knot. She's going to get the nice run. And she's a nice stay in Philly. She'll run the mile half out strong. There you go, folks. A tip Giovanna in the Mercedes Benz. And what about Accelerator in the slipper? Mate, he's got to be hard to beat. He's drawing well. He's going good, the horse. You know, he's been up a long time, but he's pretty tough. So I think he's got to be hard to beat. Oh, champion jockey Chrissy Munts. He's won the slipper before. Look at him on Accelerator. And, of course, Giovanna in the Mercedes. Kenny Callender. Yeah, thanks very much, Simon. One of the really good little fellas in racing, Chris Munts. And uh, uh, I reckon those who've backed Accelerator will be happy to see that he's got uh, his eye in already on Sorrento. Yeah, no, I'm sure he will be. A, a big day. He loves a bit of pressure, Chrissy Munts. And uh, he'll handle it well, no doubt. Sorrento, the winner of the Queen of the Turf Stakes. And we're going to take a quick break from here at Rose Hill and back with more on Amy Golden Slipper Day. the winner of the Queen of the Turf stakes on Amy a Golden Slipper Day. Race two here at Rose Hill Gardens. And let's have a look at the dividends. Number eight, Sorrento, 18 30 and $4. Poppet was second, number nine, four sixty, And Belle Jour, what a grand filly she is, $2.20. Well, the Tullock stakes is race three here at Rose Hill. Let's take a quick look at the early totes and Universal Prince. He's the hot pot at one forty. Neptune's Journey, $24. Inspire, $34. Number four, $27, Outgate, that is. Hebe Reby, $12. Rerinka, one of the outsiders, 156 Polish Echo, 31 Off guard at $74. We go over the page, 55 for Free Ranger, 64 Endeavours. Zarev, $8.70. The man, 115 Magna Court, Qatar. $262. I don't think it's going to get any of mine. Speed Merchant, $90, 110 and 169 for 15 and 16. And then the emergencies are not with us. Well, the hot pot is Universal Prince. He'll be ridden by Justin Sheen. Probably was the most popular bloke here at Rose Hill last week. He's trying to turn it around today, I'm sure. And here he is with Anthony Miffin. Well, Justin, plenty said about Universal Prince's run last week. Have you got anything to add? Plenty said and probably enough said, uh, you know, today's another day. It's our, um, you know, semi-final, if you like, into the grand final of the derby next week. Um, you know, everyone at home, stay tuned. Wide world of sports for next Saturday's Sam McGuire derby. You know, today's our um, final hit out. We'll top him off and uh, very confident going into the derby next Saturday. Now, while it is a semi-final, there's plenty out there who probably just want to get back uh, yours for theirs. You'd have a bet on Universal Prince today? Oh, you could do a lot wrong than, um, than you know, you could you could do yourself a, lot, a favour and back him today, provided he's, uh, you know, viable odds. I mean, um, but he's going to be very, very hard to beat, obviously. You know, everyone knows that. He's a class horse of the field and uh, dual group one winner. Um, you know, pretty good credentials. You, you seem to have a bit of a steely look of determination in your eye today after the criticism of the week. Would that be fair to say? Oh, you know, um, 
this is what it's all about, you know, big big time racing and, um, you know, it's just another day at the office for me. Uh, I've forgotten about last week, as I said, today's another day and uh, just in preparation finally today for next week, that's what it's all about, you know. Today's not the be all end all of, of his preparation, uh, you know, next week's what he's been set for, but in saying that he'll be winning today. Uh, Bede happy with the way the horse has gone this week? Yeah, he's assured me the horse is, uh, he's flying, he's, he's improved again since last week, so, um, you know, good luck the rest. Look out. Good on you. Thanks for joining us, Justin, and good luck. Thank you, Anthony. Yes, yeah, a big day for Justin Sheen. Plenty of pressure, pressure on him riding Universal Prince. Now, uh, on days like this, we come to the races and everything's basically presented to us. Particularly the horses. They've all been educated and they've been broken in and they're fit. And they go to the races and uh, we really enjoy it. But behind the scenes, a hell of a lot of work goes on, particularly with young horses that are won. We've got to get them to the races by the time they're two. They've got to be broken in and educated. And one of the best at doing that is a fellow by the name of Rick Worthington. And our own Michael Ma caught up with him recently. Their children asked to act like adults before their time. They must strut the equine catwalk, ignore the paparazzi and the noise. Then from a standing start, as gates and crowd explode, these two-year-olds must run for their lives. Twelve months before, as yearlings, these horses were struggling to understand their place in this man-made game. You've got to understand, this horse has no idea that, you know, when the gates are open at the front that he's got to jump. We've got to build on that, so we'll go in and out a couple of times. This son of Desert King is one of 150 yearlings Rick Worthington will ready for the racetrack this year. One, two, three. And he'll just have a look, and that's good. OK, and we'll build on that. I'm very happy with that, right, because everything went well, and what, we knew to, what we're going to do now is build on that to get the horse to ping out. But if you've got that right, the rest of it's easy. That's a girl. And we'll just get her to work. As he floats out of the mist on his property just out of Barrel, southwest of Sydney, Rick Worthington looks very much the horse whisperer. Get her to focus more on me than you, that's it. But when you're stealing thoroughbreds for the trauma of the track, being a horse whisperer is just a bit too romantic. I'm trying to do the best possible job I can and get the best out of the animal and do it as, as kindly and as calmly as possible and as humanely as possible so that at the end of the day, the trainers and the owners uh, receive something that will jump and run and um, is not trying to run off the track or hurt riders and what have you. So um, am I a horse whisperer? No, but I believe I'm a dedicated horseman. Just three days after he and partners paid $210,000 for a filly by Dan Zero at the Adelaide sales, Worthington goes to work. I'll keep annoying her until she brings her head around, touches me, I'll give her a rub. Same thing with that biting, don't make an issue out of it. It's there, we know that. Soon the coach is pushing the boundaries. Let's go here. Now really, she could kick me or go to kick me. She's got the option, but she's taking the other option. All right? Because that's what we've taught her. Already we're teaching her to respond in a positive way under pressure. The first lesson is a success. You're now watching a Danehill filly about to be coaxed into the water for the very first time. Even Laurie Lawrence might find this tricky. Yeah, we'll keep going now. Okay, we'll keep going. Rick didn't always do it this way. In an apprenticeship in the Northern Territory, he did whatever it took to break horses in, buck them to a standstill, until an accident left him with a plate and six pins in one leg. Age 24, Rick figured there had to be a better way to treat horses. And that's her first swimming lesson. Worthington's team includes his wife Dawn, who is the twin sister of champion marathon runner Heather Turland, has athletic bloodlines herself. As she and son Garth has learned, you do anything to avoid a fight with a youngster. I have only ever seen one horse buck and we're a breaking in pre-training spelling facility. One horse. I'm not saying that, you know, there haven't been a one or two out there somewhere along, but there you go. And I remember it vividly because it was like, oh my 
goodness, look at that. I mean, and the fellow that was on at the time, I reckon, had blue tack on his rear end to stay on it. In a horse, it's a bit like children. Um, they're a product of their environment. And it's amazing, isn't it, when you'll go somewhere and someone will say, oh, nobody's ever hit this horse, and you go to do that, and the first thing it does is throws his head in the air. So, I mean, what they are is they're the walking truth of what is. And we can't deny that, nor can we hide that. Right, good. Off and running in the slipper. Worthington has schooled some wild ones, and often the most spirited are the winners, like Flying Spur in the Golden Slipper of 1995. And getting between them, Flying Spur, and look at Octagonal jumping out of the ground. Flying Spur hit the front, Flying Spur wins the slipper. He was a horse that was a, a very dominating individual. He wanted to dominate, and he needed the rules reinforcing um, regularly. Every year, three or four babies stand out from the rest. This year, one of those is this Grand Lodge filly. Last year, Rick was sure another filly would make the grade. She blossomed into Phaser. Rick, do you think there's any chance on Golden Slipper Day that you might look at Phaser and that she might look back at you, remember you and give you the wink and the nod? Well, actually, between you and I, and this is just between you and I, some months before that, she called me over to a box one evening and she said, now, Rick, I'm your bright star. I want you, as soon as the betting is open, to start mortgaging everything you have. If we've been able to contribute in, even in just a small way, to her success, it'll be one of those great thrills, even if it's from a distance. Yes, Michael Ma there with Rick Worthington. What an important job uh, all those breakers and educators do right around the country. Well, time for a break uh, on this racing coverage. We'll be back with the celebrity punters and uh, Andrew Voss, he loves the working man. He's been out there having a chat to us, uh, chat to the punters, and this is what they said as we go to this break on the wide world of sports. I reckon the best tips come from blokes with goaties. You've got a very good one. What's your tip for the slipper? Shovel, shovel, that's what your name is. Okay. Golden slipper, you look like an absolute expert. Who's going to win? Uh, number four. The world is waiting on your tip. <laughs> Royal court tip. Why? Because I just think it's going to be too good. Mate, there's a rumour going around that uh, if your tip, Royal court tip, wins the golden slipper, you're going to shout ice creams for the course. Maybe. If I leave any. Yeah. That's the wrong man. I'm giving you the last word on the golden slipper. Yeah. For the whole world, who's going to win? And you have to go with God today. Hosanna. Hosanna from Darren Beeman and God will be with you. Well done, mate. Welcome back to Rose Hill Gardens as uh, we move closer to Amy Golden Slipper 2001. A lot of expectation out there from the punters. And talking about punters, celebrity punters, we love having celebrity punters on the wide world of sport. And I've got two great celebrity punters with me today. I know they know everything about racehorses. Michael Slater, Grant Hackett. Do you blokes know anything? Mate, I'd like to think I know everything, but I know absolutely <laughs> nothing. All I know is it's a great day and there's, um, you know, a lot of people here and it's going to be a fun day. Well, welcome and Grant uh, in particular, welcome. We saw you swimming your heart out down in Tassie last week. Yeah. What's happened since then? I had a pretty good week and basically just came to Sydney for the week doing a few things and a couple of TV shows and promotions, but it's been a good week and uh, to cap the week off coming down to Rose Hill here and uh, hopefully finish up with a couple of winners. Mate, it's great to have a personal chat with you because you read a lot about it, but the Olympics to you know the Nationals last week, I mean, is, how emotionally have you Olympians gone with it? I mean, what, what are the ups and downs? I think uh, the higher you go up, the, the lower you, you go down at the end of the day. But I mean, for me, having a good break after the Olympics and uh, feeling the pressure and everything sort of easing up after the Games was great. And uh, getting back into the sport, which I love and, and have a real passion for, was great. And uh, competing at Hobart last week was really motivating and uh, looking forward to the World Championships coming up in July. Now, you guys, I mean, you train, you train, and you seem to do more training. Uh, what, what do you do outside of that? I mean, do you have any interest in, in thoroughbred? What do you do? Uh, my old man, he, he likes a bit of the horse racing. He's owned a few horses in his time, and uh, if I can get down to the track every now and again, I will. But for me, I, I'm not a real big gambler, so uh, today...
today is going to be a bit interesting to see how I go. But yeah, for me, I just like to get out. I like a bit of motorsport also. So, I mean, you don't really get much time to do a few things these days. So it's sort of hard to get around everywhere. Mate, uh, forget about not being a gambler. We're about to change that today. <laughs> now, Slats, are you, are you a gambling man? Uh, no, not really, mate. I enjoy the, the you know the occasional punts, and with with Mark War and Ricky Ponning in the side, it's always you're, you're hearing about the dogs and who's uh, who's in form in the races and, and what have you. So I, I have taken an interest, but I, I can't say I'm an actual punter. Let's talk about the recent tour of India. Tough times over there. It's, it's always a tough tour. Uh, last night the Aussies came home with something, uh, three two in the one day series. That, that was a good effort. It was a great effort, and it, it's amazing. It was a bit like the World Cup for me in that it got to a point where they had to win the last two games to, to win the series. And, and it seems that Australia, you know, always, when, they, when they're faced with a huge challenge, they, they, they rise to that next level. And, you know, a great start from, from Adam Gilchrist, who's probably been shy of a few runs on the tour, and Michael Bevan sort of guiding the boys home, you know, as he's done so often. So it was a great way for them to finish, and they'll come home you know, quite confident and quite happy with um, the overall tour. I know I know from a test match point of view, it was just a great series. I know we lost, but I think we could have just as easily won the series. Um, and, and all of us sort of walked off at the end of that last test match, holding our head high, um, thinking we'd, you know, really going down to the wire. It was a great series. Just while you're talking about that test match, watching it on telly from back here, it was, it was wonderful. There was always something happening. Yeah, yeah and I think, I know from a, a team perspective, we needed a, a challenge like that. and. And I think from, from a spectator point of view, I'm sure the Australian public would have loved to have seen two test matches. OK, we lost, but they went to the last session on the fifth mm. day, and we haven't seen test cricket like that for a long time. Now, you talk of challenges. You two have got a couple of crackers this afternoon. Now, the New South Wales TV have given you each $100. So um, you've got to have a flexi bet trifecta with <laughs> one of those. But coming up is the Tullock Stakes. And what do we fancy? Slats? Well, I'm... I you're saying I can go 50 on the nose, is that right? You can do whatever yeah. you want. Well, You've I'm got going, 100, I'm going, so I wouldn't be okay, well, I'm going to go 50 on the nose, and I just like the name Free Ranger. There's going to be nothing scientific about my uh, my my betting today. And then for a trifecta, I'm going to go 50, and I've got Universal Prince, Hebe Ruby, and uh, and Free Ranger as well. So would you back a horse called Royal Dravid if it was here? Possibly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Grant, what do you like? Uh, for me, I think I'll uh, put 50 on the nose for uh, Neptune's journey. Uh, Damien Oliver looks a good today, and I think um, I'll box uh, Hebe, Hebe Rebe or whatever it is. Yeah, no, <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Universal Prince, of course, you have to go with the favourite. And um, who else? We've got uh, Zara Riot or something. Something like that. Yeah, I, I tell you what you should do at home, I viewers, think... is just check your local guys. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad they're very good at sport. <laughs> yeah. gonna... I don't know what they're doing with these names of these horses. Can they keep them simple, please? We'll keep it as simple as possible, and we'll go back to the simpletons a bit later on. We're going to take a break <laughs> from Rose Hill Gardens. Still to come on the show, the women backing on True Jewels, the gregarious advertising guru, and the mob-pumping accelerator. We meet three syndicates and share their dreams on Golden Slipper Saturday here on Wide World of Sports. The horses are in the yard for the Tullock Stakes race three here at Rose Hill Gardens on Amy Golden Slipper Day. Let's take a look at a few of them now. And number one is Universal Prince. Here's the hot pot, Kent. Yeah, and he's going to probably start favourite in the derby. And uh, Shogun Lodge won this race last year. It's a good horse's race. And uh, he's a chunky little fellow, Ronnie Duffy, isn't he? But he's standing up to the racing well. He certainly is. He's coped with last week well. He hasn't lightened off at all.